my name is Tapiwa Chipupa. I am a filmmaker from Zimbabwe. I'm based in Harare. I am uh, many things. I'm a director, I'm a producer, and I am a writer. Uh, my country's industry is still, I would say, really very small. It's not a lot of films out in the, on the international platform as far as Zimbabwe is concerned. We have a lot of things to learn. There's not um, access for funding. You know, like when I travel, I meet other, 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 you know, peers, other colleagues from different countries, and they have a film fund established, a film organization. We don't have that in place yet. We are still really sort of grappling around, trying to figure out how to structure. The government is not yet in a place where there is a place where you can go to say, I'm making a film, can somebody fund me? Those places are not available. There's a lot of money for cultural stuff, like, you know, dancing, poetry, sculpture, but filmmaking is still really quite, I, I wouldn't say marginalized, but it's just not yet there. The, the platform for us is not yet there. We have a film festival that runs, you know, it hasn't been quite consistent the past few years, but it's really, I, I would say of myself and the few filmmakers that they are, is particularly women, we are really like pioneers in a sense, yeah. Within that context where, you know, you're, you're, you're far removed from Europe and there's not funding bodies disseminating information, how did you find out about Fodiosu? Um, I have a very long history of how I even got into film. I, I'm going to try to be brief so I don't take up the time, but I originally started off as uh, wanting to be an accountant and I went off to school in South Africa and Zimbabwe started to, we had a lot of economic challenges. The currency went strange. So I came back after first year. I didn't know what I was going to do. My parents couldn't afford the fees anymore because they were like, it was now like triple what it started off as. And so I was at home. I started to do odd jobs. And one day I was called for an interview and uh, I got into this, it was a media company and I didn't know anything about media. I loved movies, but I didn't know. And so I got, I got the job because I'm, I was financially savvy. So I could be trusted. It was a big budget, a big film. And that's how my love for film developed. Then I started to realize I, I thought I just wanted to produce, but then over time I realized I, I could tell stories as well. So I realized I needed both, especially coming from a place where you can't just say so-and-so produced for me and so-and-so because they, there's a very, there isn't a very large, uh, what could I say, place to pick from because there's not many of us. So it's been very handy for me to be able to do both. And I went to South Africa on a scholarship on film school, for film school. And it is that where I started, my world started to open up. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be a filmmaker, but there's all these things that I, I don't know. And that's when I saw Produce Sud. And I thought this is the best way, especially coming from a country where I, I have no exposure. I can't even come to a platform saying, I have so much money from my country. Can someone support me? I'm basically saying I need help. And so I, I, to be honest, I applied for a producer suit many times. Gamma will tell you. <laughs> I applied with different projects in a different state as a producer, as a director. Um, but now when I look back, um, I, I was, it's funny, I was actually talking about it this morning. When I look back, I realized all those projects, I wasn't yet ready. And it's only when I got in with, um, I was fortunate to be, I think I'm one of the few that's been twice to produce suit. Um, I, 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 the projects were the right ones, like they were the right story. You know, when I didn't get in before, I was like, uh, but then I realized if I'd gone with those projects, it wouldn't have served my trajectory as a storyteller, as a producer, as a director, everything uh, at all. It was just going to be an opportunity I would have learned, but the mileage would have been different. And so I'm, I'm just so thankful that it worked out that way. I think I applied three times and then the fourth time I won the prize. I love that. So before we get into talking about the individual projects, because I did not know that you had applied many times. And yeah. so can you just, before we move on, tell me what kept you going when you applied and got knocked back, applied, got knocked back, applied. You know, that takes a lot of self-belief, a lot of determination. Um, I would say, I think, to be quite honest, I think I'm a very persistent person and I'm very resilient. 
I think even when you look at my projects, they reflect what my experiences reflect how I took the approach. I mean, obviously the first no, I was like, oh my gosh, um, uh, I'm, I'm not good enough. But then I started to learn that it's not necessarily about your worthiness. I mean, like if it's like 500 people applying and there's only 10 or six that can be accepted, you can either fall into the 10 or just not. And there's another, I don't know, you know, 490 people that are crying at home that have the same exact same letter as you. And I used the each rejection to question why has I why have I received this no? And what is it about the project that I'm, you know, with the first one, I was a producer on the project. And when I look back on that project, it really wasn't a good fit for producer suit at that time at all. And I don't think I would have reaped any real benefits. With the second one, um, I, I felt like I was the producer, but I felt like the director had not yet done enough development on the story. As much as I had been talking to her about it, she wasn't very open to me, what I was saying, like, let's fix the script, let's this. Um, and I had applied thinking that will also help, but I felt like we had a good story, but it would just, it wasn't ready to be on that platform. And then with the third one, it was a documentary and I was the producer, I, I, was, I, was, I am the director producer in development. But the thing is it had traveled a lot. It had gotten a lot of exposure. So there were some places where I think it was like crossing, like I had done La Fabrique with it. So it was kind of like, I would have liked to have first done Produce Suit then gone to Cannes with the project because Produce Suit gives you the tools to like navigate. Um, I'm, I'm not saying La Fabrique doesn't help at all, but I just felt like it would have been nicer if I had first gone to, to produce a suit and then gone to Cannes. And I already had had a lot of mileage with the project. And so it would have been, it wouldn't have been duplication. I would have still learned, but I felt, I just feel like there were other platforms I could have taken the project, which I, which I have done. And then with these new ones, then it was like, I really, I really understood, like, I really do need this. I need to be, here and so for me it was like I knew where I was coming from I knew that I didn't have a lot of exposure I was in the process of learning and every time I applied it was a learning process because there are questions in the application which made me question the project and what I was doing with the project and so as I evolved you know and and over time I would meet Guillaume in Durban and I would meet other people who had been selected I started to realize what kind of project and sort of where I need in my personal development, I needed to be to be ready to receive such, you know, mentorship and information. And I think it's just really, it's like it aligned. And I'm really thankful that I persisted and I didn't say, you know, cause a lot of times when you get a no, you feel like, oh, the world hates me or whatever, and you don't want to do it anymore. But I just kept saying, I'm going to try, I'm going to try, I'm going to try. And, but each time my, process I would say was becoming more strategic and more thoughtful about you know what project am I taking is it the right one is it going is it going to serve it and so on yeah in a nutshell yeah that's why yeah I guess I'm just very resilient <laughs> well it sounds to me as if it's two things yes you're resilient um and you also uh, you realize that it, perhaps it was about the project and not about you yeah um but you know what interests me is that um speaking personally when i get a rejection if i if i manage to be resilient enough to say okay i'm not gonna let it touch me very often mm -hmm. i don't i still don't want to go near the the thing that hurt me i'll go elsewhere right so yeah so you know you went and you were accepted by la fabrique which is very mm -hmm. prestigious one thing you could have done is to go ha you know, but you didn't because it seems to me that you must have felt that there was something that you wanted from Produire au Sud and that's why you kept going back. So can you tell me, what was it that you wanted before you went? Why did you keep going back? What were you looking for from Produire au Sud? I wanted the personal attention. Like, I mean, you get that at La Fabrique, but um, La Fabrique is really 
it's a it's a big stage it's exposure to a lot of um co-producers distributors which is very very important because then especially where i come from where i can never get that exposure that was so special to me to be in can and to have people that normally you would have to try and call core and they'd be like who are you and they finally see you and they see your project and they acknowledge you and i got a lot of networking and partnerships from that um what i wanted now was like the personal attention that you know it's like when you when i am here in zimbabwe I'm by myself i'm writing i just write i don't know what if what i'm writing makes sense and because i'm a very sort of visceral storyteller i write from my feelings and and i write from what i sense i need to say but to have someone to to now take that thing like a porter and be like okay tapiwa I know that you want a vase, but actually you have, you know, a bowl. And to do that, you need to do this, you know, not to, you know, I, I didn't feel like they dictated what I should do, but they made me sort of like go back to the pottery room and be like, okay, so if this is what I want, I need to turn the wheel this way. I need to do this. I need to do this before I dry it. And I say, this is what I want to present. It gave me like what I never would get, which is an insight into like what is going on in the on the international platform but also particularly into my project which is in a more detailed way like where if someone whereas like I, I in La Fabrique we talked about all these things but we were geared towards presenting ourselves to um potential partners and so on but now it was like don't worry about partners don't worry about co-producers right now it's like how do I look do I look okay um, do I need to change my shirt? Have I got the wrong shoes on? You know, like as in, you know, like dressing yourself, dressing the project. And also it was about thinking about yourself as a professional in what, and like your development and like, what stories am I telling? Where am I going with this? You know, and that's what it was. I wanted that, um, that personal attention to understand how do I look at a really look at my script? How do I really look at my treatment? What am I saying about my budget? How have I positioned myself in my proposal? Of course you do that in La Fabrique, but it's more, as I said, geared to, you're already working towards presenting yourself. Here it was like, we're not presenting ourselves right now. We're just, we're just analyzing and we are trying to say what works, what doesn't and giving ourselves time to reflect. And that's what I really wanted. Is that why you said before that you would have liked to have done Produit en Sud prior to Fabrique? Yeah, I would say it's like you're building on something. And so if I had Produit Sud and I didn't have La Fabrique, there would be things missing. And if I had La Fabrique and I didn't have Produit Sud, there would be elements missing in what has been going towards constructing me as a filmmaker. So I was really just saying, if I had a perfect world, I would want to do bo both and I've been fortunate to do both. But in my perfect world with that particular project, I would have first gone to produce suit and then to La Fabrique. But whichever one anyone picks, they all serve a particular purpose. And they are all honestly, to be very honest, very instrumental, especially if you're an emerging filmmaker and you're coming from like a country like mine where you have no platform. And so tell me about, um, you've been twice now to Produire au Sud. Tell me about yeah. um, the projects you took and, and if you like maybe um, whether the experience was the same for both, whether it was, you know, why you went back twice. What um, you want to get, so yeah. Um, I was very fortunate with both the projects that I, in a, a consecutively, I pitched them at Durban and somehow by like, I don't know, I'll say grace, the grace of God, I won the prize twice. And I couldn't believe it the second time I was crying so much. I didn't know, I, it was just, I couldn't believe it. And the experience was different, like because the projects are so different. The first one is, um, it's a, it's like, a, they're both sort of magic realist in a sense, but the first one is about an abusive woman trapped in a house and she's trying to get out. So it plays on three timelines where she's, her past, she remember, she's remembering her past. She's living in the present in a situation. And 
then she has dreams. It's like a, a, a mystical, but the dreams are revealing what is going on in her present situation. So people come in to see her, but she cannot escape because she's so terrified of her husband. I was really dealing with the issue of gender-based violence in, in my country and more just about personal autonomy as a woman. I'm very inspired by stories about women and our aut autonomy, especially coming from a society where patriarchy still exists. And so I, I, I find myself drawn to telling stories of strong women who find their way out to the top. The second project is about, it's a fairy tale, um, but I'm accessing like ancient Zimbabwean traditional oral storytelling me methods and then making it into a fairy tale about a girl who chooses to stand up to her father and her grandmother. And in, in that sense, not only saves herself and her siblings and her mother, but also the village she lives in. So that one is, is very more like, it's like a hybrid fairy tale. So there are two different, they're two completely different stories. Um, I think the similarities, the themes is that it's women and their autonomy, but the storylines are different. But with each one, I took different, I took different things. Um, I mean, obviously the format, was similar because it's a program, but I, you know, what I took from the mentors in the first bit and what I took from the mentors and the exchange in the second project is completely different, but it was really eye-opening for me because like I said, I, I generally feel, I, I would say I write in isolation, kind of like an, a hermit somewhere because I'm by myself in a very small industry and beginning to look at my project with a worldview perspective and things that maybe I feel like I understand because it's my culture and I understand because it happens, it happened to me or whatever, trying to understand that I'm not just telling the story to myself and people around me who understand, I'm telling it to a wider world and not necessarily how do I make it fit, but just how do I enable them to understand what I'm trying to say? Like, what, what visual, my visual language, uh, my storytelling, like how I pace out the story, what I need to remove. And what I love the most about it is that um, I didn't feel dictated to, like your character has to die at this point or you need to remove this character. I had a lot of questions posed to me that I actually said at the end, like especially of the 2020 session, I said, I have to go and sleep. Like I have to, I have to think. I can't just go back to my laptop and start writing. And that was what was uh, I liked because I had been given many routes that I could go, but I had um, I had the safety of knowing the cover, as in like this is what I'm trying to achieve. So I can go left, I can go right, but in the end, I must end up at this destination where my story is translatable to others, understandable. And I felt like I'd been given an edge to be able to make my storytelling more competitive in the sense that it's not in, I mean competitive as in um, it can stand with others on a platform because I mean, whatever story you tell is particular to you and to me. So we can never really be in comp competition, but as in it's palatable and um, people can understand me. That's yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, yeah. I understand. And you're directing both those projects? Yes, and I'm I'm a director producer. So I mean, obviously, with producer, I came. My husband is the other producer, but I always, I've I think because of starting off in the industry as a producer, and then realizing how my industry is, it has helped me a lot to also be able to talk about my projects as a producer and to be able to to manipulate my budgets and that by myself and to think through. Um, everything because on some of the forums I've been selected, he has not always been able to attend. So I've always been able to, it has been very helpful to just have that ability. I understand it means that you can still take away the use, the stuff that's useful for producer and uh, communicate that to him. Yeah. And did he attend with you um, in not? Yes, he did for, I mean, we were online, but yes, he was there for the session. So he learned to, he learned a lot. Like he, he suddenly had all these ideas about our project. Um, and I learned because he would like tell me and I would tell him what had happened in the director's session. And I felt like 
it gave us, um, I would say courage to keep going, you know, um, because sometimes when you write, like we were speaking about, you get a lot of no's and then you feel like, is what I'm saying even interesting to anybody? And, and um, should I be pursuing this anymore? But I think also what has always helped me is I say, why? Because before, initially I would be like, oh, it's a no, it's horrible. And I want to throw it away. Then I started to say, but why do they say no to me? What is missing in this that makes them say no? What is it that is not shining through? And I started to learn a lot of things about myself. Like, for example, a lot of times I'm, I, I, I would say I'm quite a, a nerd. So I live in my head. So I can see the images. So I can tell you that she's going to run through the bush and the snake and what, what I can see it in my head. But when I type now on my script or my whatever, I, I may not include everything. And then when I finally have a face to face with someone, they ask me all these questions and I say, why are they asking me these questions? The, the film is pretty straightforward in my head. And then I realized when I go back to my document, oh, it's actually not there. <laughs> and then I realized I have to put it there. So it's um, it, it, those, so that experience, like having someone really go through your story with you and you start to say, in, cause in my mind, I'm like, I know exactly what's gonna happen. And I know why this is like this. And then they're like, but I don't understand. I'm like, what don't you understand? And then I realize now, when I read it with somebody else who's not me, I'm like, oh, okay, um, uh, okay, this doesn't work. So it's really, it was a really good, uh, I, I, it's one of the things I really, over time have been paying attention to like, yes, you can live in your head, but you can't live in your head if you're presenting your project. I hear you. So it like enabled you to step outside of yourself and see your project from someone else's yeah. eyes and, and make sure that it was comprehensible. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times it's difficult, especially when you're a first time filmmaker. Uh, like I, I mean, I have many projects in development, but I'm uh, all of them. I'm like a first time feature documentary, first time fiction. Um, you are not sure, you know, you're not sure what you, if what you're doing is not necessarily right, but as in, as in, are you being heard? Like, are you making yourself heard and heard clearly so that your idea is strong? Um, so you can have a strong idea, but you are not being heard. And what I got from this experience was the ability to step out of my own body. I, I know it sounds weird, but that's the only way I can like to, to step out of my own body and to be able to look at my project as an outsider and to say, this is what is wrong, this doesn't work, uh, but still with the mind of a director, with the mind of a producer, and then to be able to find a balance, which is what uh, I've been doing these past uh, few months since we had the session. I've been really doing that, like stepping out of myself and stepping out of my own thoughts and saying, okay, honestly, if I was watching this, if I was reading this, isn't this person talking too much? Isn't this, or, you know, like I'm, it gave me that ability, like it strengthened that ability in me to be able to be objective to my own work as opposed to being very subjective and like being in my head. Okay. So I'm interested if to know, because you applied so many times with other projects and then you applied twice, I'm interested to know whether um, that meant that your the application process changed the way you were telling your story. Um, what I'm getting at here is I'm, I'm interested in the degree, as a researcher, I'm interested in the degree to which um, a structure or a particular, mm -hmm. you know, uh, fund with its eligibility criteria may influence content. Mm, I see what you mean. Yeah, um, I would say the up. I would say as I would apply, I was also evolving as an individual and growing in terms of working towards. Um, making projects. I think at a certain point along that line, I made my first like, oh, it's like a 52 minute documentary. And I learned from that. And also what was happening at the same time was that I, because I was, I'm developing several projects, I had a lot of opportunities to go 
to I was very fortunate because I don't think it happens to everyone, but I ended up on a lot of other platforms and had a lot of other exposures. I mean, I went like, for example, I went to Durban several times and I had to pitch. And then I realized I'm not in order, you know, like when I had to prepare, like, like I need to, you know, shape my project. So all those things were, it's all been part of my development process and looking at the questions to be quite honest, every time I have, every time I applied, I had a different view to them and a different understanding. Because a lot of times I think, especially when you are a young, you know, not necessarily age, but you're a young filmmaker, there's sometimes there's a tendency to apply everywhere uh, or to target the one thing and just to be stubborn and say, I'm going to Sundance, I'm going to Sundance. But I mean, like Sundance, like producers who takes like 10 people, <laughs> you can't get in easily. But what was happening with me, I was developing a deeper understanding of the questions every time I came across them. So I know um, f the first time I applied was just like, okay, they want a synopsis, bam, 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 bam. They want to know why, you know, but as I would apply each time, I started to think about what am I saying as a director? What am I saying as a producer? Where am I going? Because that also um, influences, I think your readiness, because if you are not yet at that point where it's, you know, it's like, it will be, it will be um, like giving someone who's full food, you know, like you, you <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, I speak in a lot of metaphors, but like, that's the only way. So it was like, I was not dead ready for that meal. Like I wasn't ready to have whatever, you know, if it was dessert, I was not ready for dessert. So each time there was a depth that was now coming into my, cause now I, I would get a rejection and then I'd say, why? And then I would say, why about myself and why about the project? And then I actually, to be honest, also started to go and look, you know, whenever I could, if I saw that Guillaume had put up the selection for 2015, I would go and say, who got selected? You know, not in a jealousy kind of way or anything, but more just like to understand and to see like, so I'd look at who has been selected, what they're doing. And I know that's not criteria because you can be a first time filmmaker and you can, you've can you never made anything and you can get into producer suit. It's about the project and yourself. But I started to understand like, this is where I should be going. And I, and I do generally try to do that, like to see if I'm interested in a fund or whatever, to see what is it they are interested in, what kind of projects get selected. It doesn't guarantee that if I, I don't then go off and write exactly what I saw, but it gives me a sense of, would my project even be interesting to them, you know? So that's, yeah, I'll be honest to say, yeah, it evolved. It, those questions continued to, to challenge me, uh, not negatively, but to, to say to myself, what am I doing? You know, where am I going? Am I growing? Am I not? And that's why, especially when I finally got in, I was like, and then I look back, I was like, no ways would I have been okay at that point to go with that project. It would have been such a, a waste. And I'm, a, I'm glad this time has evolved uh, uh, where I've been applying and applying and not getting in, but I've been growing. And I actually remember that one, one of the times when I got the prize, Gamma said to me, you have been evolving. And I was like, yes, that's great, because that's what I've been trying to do. <laughs> so you're saying that it's not, um, yes, for sure, um, your applications were changing, but the, that it wasn't in some cynical way just to meet criteria. It was because your understanding of, of what was required and also how to present those projects, how to yeah. bring out the elements that would speak to um those who are reading it how to do that and um and that you are getting better at that yeah and also understanding should i be at this point in my project applying for this or should i step away and go and write some more for another year and then when the next call comes i put myself out there um which i think is something a lot of us filmmakers we don't always know it's just like i want to go to la fabrique but i do you know like at that point, will it serve you, you know? And, and, and a lot of times we forget that a lot of times um, the people who read our work, they are not just thinking about your project is good or you are nice or whatever. They're thinking, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to read for hot dogs. And I realized that that was experience also helped me. Um, and I was, as I was looking at the project, I was, it was like, 
is this person going to be ready for this lab? Because I, I, I had attended and I'm like, no, this person is not ready. Their writing is not ready. They need to go and shoot a little bit more. They need to write some more and then come back. And it's only those things, you only gain them in if you spend time with other peers, especially if you're like in my country where I can't go to someone and say, what do you know about Hubert Balls? You know, I can't. Um, but you, if you, if you, in applying and applying, if you are really self-searching, is that the word? Like if you really are searching and questioning yourself and questioning your development, you can start to see that, you know, I, I, I'm not ready for this. Like now there are a lot of things I look at, I'm like, I actually say to my husband, we're not ready to apply for this. And he says, no, 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 let's wait. And you know, like we, we are, you start to become, I think it's important to be self-aware and not just to, because a lot of times people look at these labs, like, I just want to say, I went to Cannes. It doesn't help that you went to Cannes if it doesn't serve you or your project, you know? And, and I think that's what was happening with me over time. I became self-aware, like, is this necessary for me? And I started to ask questions more out of, not from, I wanna go to Cannes or I wanna go to Nantes, more as in, um, will I benefit in a way that will take me forward? Will it also be beneficial for the program to have me there? You know, like there's no point in they, them setting up everything at Nantes and I'm not learning. And, and you know, because they want us to learn, they want us to grow. Um, I think, yeah, I think the thing I would say is it's important to be self-aware, but it's a, it's a thing you acquire over time, which I think I did. And I became self-aware. So there were now a lot of you as well would be like, no, I cannot apply to produce a suit. You know, I was like, I'm not ready. And then I would play along with them, but now I can. Maybe I, will, I might not get in, but now I feel like I can try. Yeah, you are very self-reflexive, yeah. <laughs> um, <I try. laughs> Yeah, no, I can hear it. I can hear how how willing you are to evolve. Wow. <laughs> I've learned that. I mean, I think what I've learned, especially because I of coming from where I come from, I've learned that every opportunity I get, I should use it to the maximum, my maximum ability, because I will never get that opportunity again. And I should use each opportunity if someone like Guillaume entrusts me with a prize to attend a lab, if someone entrusts me to select me as five out of however many people, and there are many people trying to get into these labs, each time I'm selected, it should be a stepping stone. It should not, I should not regress. I should go forward and use those tools to open up the world for myself because to, to be Quite honest, it's very hard to make a film in Zimbabwe. It's, it's very, very hard. It's very hard to find funding. And it's very hard to get people on the international platform to trust you, you know, like to, it's like, you're coming from this place. We don't know you. You want us to give you, you know, 50,000 euros to make a film and why, you know? So it's important to use every opportunity you get to build yourself and to build, uh, you know, to build your, 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 it's not reputation, but just just for people to continue to grow their faith in you, such that when you finally arrive and say, please help me with my project, they are more open and prepared because they understand you and where you're coming from and you have grown in such a way that you can receive that help. Mm. And tell me, at during the workshop itself, what was your favorite session? What was the most helpful session? <laughs> that's to be honest that's very hard because I felt like um you know it's like I felt like a kid in a can in a candy store and every candy was <laughs> it's like everything was like oh this you know but I think the one thing I can point out to it wasn't even about the session I had a meeting with one of the mentors I don't know if I'm allowed to say her name um uh it's Virginie um, I don't know how to pronounce her name. It's Devesa. I, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce her, her surname. And it was a sales meeting. And I learned a lot. Like I learned in everything. I always would like at the end of each session, my husband and I would be like, oh my gosh, we didn't know this. Oh my gosh, we have to, you know. Um, but it was something she said to me that had nothing to do with the workshop, but that empowered me. Um, I, 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 just in brief, like, I know that like the stories I tell are always very unusual. They're always very sort of eclectic because that's sort of how I am. I'm very nerdy. I live in my world. And 
it's like when we had that meeting, it's like she understood me, even though she had never met me. So she, when she was giving me advice on how to prepare and all of that, once we had done the sales thing, she, you know, she was quick to pick out that I'm very tactile and, you know, like I'm visceral and whatever and, and all of that. But what, there was a statement that she made where she sort of was like, it was like she was saying, don't change, you know, like continue to embrace yourself, continue to talk how you talk and don't let anybody tell you any different. And so it was like, um, it was, she was not, you know, it was like a stamp to say it's okay. Cause a lot of times, like, I mean, I, when I describe my projects initially, even when I go to my husband, I'm like, I wanna make this quirky thing, but I'm already, I'm like, you know, like, is anyone, is it, is it too crazy? Um, but when she said that to me, it was like um, a weight came off of me. It was like, I should just be myself and it's okay. It's okay if it sounds crazy, but the only way it's gonna work is if I'm myself, because if I try to pitch something that doesn't align with me, it's, it will radiate in my body that it's, I'm not happy. I'm just, I'm trying to please Julia. I'm not trying to tell, say what I have to say. So that like, like that was like one of the very special moments for me because when I, I finished that meeting with her, I felt so affirmed. Like I felt, I was like, you know, even if I never, you know, go to Cannes or make an Oscar, it's like, it's just about what I have to say and whoever will um, embrace it and receive it. And I should say it that way because that's the way it needs to be said. So that was a very special moment. But to be honest, like it was like such an eye-opening experience, like to have like someone go through your budget and be like, you know, help you. Cause a lot of times you're like, I don't know if I'm asking for too much or I'm asking for too little. And to have someone like go through your budget with you, you know, help you with thinking about sales and distributors, your story, um, your producing strategy. It's, you know, it's, that's why I said after I, we finished, I felt like I have to sleep on this for a while and then start to try and form a position for the project and then say, okay, this is how I'm going forward. I could not immediately say, okay, I'm going out to shoot or I'm gonna go, you know, apply for money. I was like, I need to, to, to marinate. And then when I've marinated, I can, I can say, okay, this is what's gonna happen. So to be honest for me, even as I'm speaking, like, I feel like crying. It was just such a, uh, it was such a, it was such a, you know, it's like, it's so empowering because you like, you like by yourself in Zimbabwe, no one is telling you, you don't know if you're doing the right thing. And then you have these people that just like embrace you and, and they say, it's okay. Like this is, you know, I never felt judged. I never felt like there was something wrong with my story. I felt like they were all trying to build me, build the story, build, you know, build my husband, the producer, like just build. And that was just so empowering. Yeah. Yeah, I, feel it. <laughs> I don't want to cry on camera. I cried a producer. I don't want to cry in the interview. <laughs> no, but I can feel it. I can feel, you know, I'm a mother too. So I yeah. understand how important it is when a precious idea, and, you know, when we have creative ideas, they're precious. Yeah. And to have somebody come and take it and, and say, let, let me help you. Let yes. me help you. I'm here to help. And, I, I, I can see there's something precious here. Keep showing me, keep show, it's very, um, we need that, especially when um, life can be so hard day to day, you know, yeah. and like you said, you feel quite isolated as a filmmaker. And so not only were you hearing it from, just from someone else, but you were hearing it from the world, you know, you were yeah. hearing it from people on the other side of the world who don't, share your culture but who who want to hear what you have to say mm. yeah and to have others who are in the same position as you and they're trying to understand your story and you're trying to understand them and they have their challenges and you try in your own way to to give input on their challenges and they try you know because we had you know people from Bangkok you know all over and to have someone else try to understand me in my tiny Zimbabwe and them in their country. Um, I, I think those things are so undervalued. And that's why for me, I say, it's really important to understand whether you should be applying to something like this and at what time, because then if you apply too early, the value 
and uh, of, of the process is, is lost. So you could be fortunate to be selected because your project is good, but if you are not, like if you're not ready to receive, to have, to be poured into and to be objective because you will get questions that challenge you because I mean, the point of the workshop is not to say, Julia, your project is very nice. The point is to say, we acknowledge that your project is, you know, is a strong project, but let's work on one, two, three, four, five. So to be open, to agree, to, to have your project not, you know, like broken down and to be able to be self-aware to say, I really should work on this. Instead of saying, I'm now gonna argue with Julia because I just wanna be right and I want my project to look perfect. Because the point is to be, I guess the right word is to be vulnerable and, and to be prepared to receive and to not judge whoever is giving you the information and to, to say, I always say like when somebody says something about my project, why are they saying this? My instinct is not to say, I want to defend, I want to argue with Julia and tell her why it's strong. I say, why is Julia saying this? And then I say, let me listen and hear from where she's standing, why it looks like this. And then I step back and I say, I don't have to necessarily fix it the way Julia says, but what can I do so that next time she sees it or anyone else who sees it will not stand in that position and ask me the same questions? Because I mean, we are artists. So, and I didn't feel like they were telling us things to say, you must fix your film like this. They were more saying, this is, this is a door. You can walk in and investigate and figure out how to get out at the other end or you can stay outside and never get into that room and say, I don't wanna be questioned. I don't wanna be judged. I'm just gonna hold on to my perspective. Or you can go in and you can explore. And at the end, you can decide, actually, I'm gonna come out through this door or I'm gonna come out through that door. And that's my film and that's okay. And that's what they were saying, you know. Um, and you have to be open to that. And that's what was so special for me because I didn't feel judged. I felt like I had been challenged to strengthen my story. I had been, you know, I'd been challenged even in myself as a person, in my capacity as a storyteller. Um, and I left feeling challenged. And I spent a lot of months saying, what am I going to do about this? You know, like, and not in a sense to say, so I'm going to let this character die because they said, no, it was like, if I want that character to be there, what do I do so that people don't say she's like this? I know what you're talking about. I love the way you say, do I walk into the room? I can walk in there and still walk out a different door. It doesn't matter. Or do I stay outside? That's lovely. Yeah. Um, and I think also important what you said about the um, willingness to be vulnerable. Yeah. I'm wondering, was, was anything done in order to facilitate that? Because it's not easy to be vulnerable. Um, I would say yes, because I think in the beginning, Guillaume was very clear that the intention is to grow you, to, you know, to help you to evolve, to help your project to evolve. But I mean, it's, it's relative. Someone can decide to take it or to not. And even at the end, he was very clear, especially like when we were in the director's meeting, he was like, you've heard a lot of things, you know, some of them are conflicting, some of them are the same. Um, what I want you to know is that whatever you have heard, we are not here to tell you how to make your film. Um, and he actually gave an example of someone who had had this feedback and went back and did exactly what the feedback said. And he said, the feedback is not to give you a rigid structure on how to tell your story, but it's about to challenge you, you know, like to ask you, what do you want to say? How do you want to say it? Why do you want to say it that way? And to give you things to think about, to look out for, like, is this character necessary? Is this scene necessary? Is the situation necessary? Is my motivation the right motivation? Um, and you, at the end of it, you should, from everything you've heard from your peers and us, the mentors, you should decide what you do with your film. Um, and you might not figure it out today. It might take you a year, it might take you five years. But the point is, what we were trying to do was just to like be catalysts as to what am I, you know, like, what do I do next? And I, I, that's why I said for me, I never took it. I never took anything I was 
told pers- you know personally i mean no one was like mean to me i'm not saying that that's what happened i'm just saying i never was like so emotional that i was hell bent on like as i was in a meeting with a mentor i'm already positioning to defend my story i didn't feel i had to defend my story i felt i had to be open to my story and to be open to the you know because a story can go so many ways if you allow it and then you will get to the point where you feel peace as a writer as a director as a producer that this is the way this story should be and that's what i feel like in the months that have been since i did produce with last year has been happening with me i just allowed it to sit with me i didn't say you know why did gilberto ask me this why did claire ask me this why did gamma ask me this i just said there are all these questions and there's all these things for my peers and what do i do and then i said but what do, but first of all what do i want to say and in light of what i want to say how does this feedback help me to say what i want to say effectively and i just marinated on it and then after some time i started to write and the story just started to evolve and i'm still writing and yeah you've described feeling quite tired and needing to let things sit a little bit before you could respond what was the most challenging is that what was most challenging the 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 intensity of that experience or was it were there was there something else in the workshop that was challenging or or even difficult um i think the workshop itself i mean is intense um because you know when you are writing you you just you know it's like if i'm at home i'm just writing i'm just thinking but to have like uh, you know several days where you all you must do and it is necessary julia i don't dispute it all you must do is think about your project you can't think about anything else you can't think about another project you can't think about what's cooking in the oven the only thing you can do you wake up and you talk your project you go to bed you think about your project um I think it's I think it's important like to not that's why I said for me I never would want to respond immediately because maybe something you're telling me now I might argue and 5 months from now I'll be like oh my gosh why you know I mean I remember attending a workshop where a lady said to me as we it was for another project and she said to me you might find that you will take things from your other film and put it in this film and at that point I looked at her and I was like I don't know you know I wasn't rude but I, at that point I remember thinking I don't know I don't I'm not sure and then another lady said to me you will go home you will sleep on this and you will find your story and I was like I don't know I think I have my story you know but I didn't say it to her I said I actually said to her I don't know maybe I don't know but I'm going to take your advice and then I went home and 8 months later I had a completely different story like the other lady said and and then like another year passed and then I tried to edit my footage and suddenly I was drawing from my film my previous film so I, I I that was like a very good lesson for me I mean I never judged those days I love them but it was like at that moment I was like really I don't know I was like mulling over it with them I was like I don't know do you think so okay let me go home and think about it so I've learned like now what you might say to me now I might be very worked up about it because I've spent 7 days talking about my film so I can choose to get worked up about it or I can say I actually don't know because I actually don't know and then say I'm going to go to sleep for 2 months and when I wake up maybe I will know and I think a lot of times sometimes people make that mistake they become aggressive like why is Julia saying my character doesn't work but you don't know you don't know until you try to redraft you don't know uh, you know that in 3 years from now after you've insulted Julia about your character you will take out that character or you will put in what she said you should put in and you argued so why don't you just just be vulnerable like just be like open and listen let it you know really listen and you find like as all the mentors talk there's a common thread and that should be the first thing you take away like Julia said this Giamma said this Ben said this so and so said this obviously there's a problem if everybody's saying the same thing but then there'll be something you say julia will say and giamma will say that is different but it's somehow tied together like where i was saying one lady was like you'll take from your film and the other one was like you're going to change all of this and you'll find your voice 
And I was like, I don't know, but okay, I, I take it. I'm going to go home and see what happens. And that's what happened. That's really nice. Because what you're telling me is, yes, there are aspects that are difficult, obviously, yeah. but but they're not necessarily negative. It's intrinsic to the process that you'll be challenged. Yes. Mm. It is. It's like, you know, it's like when you go to any lab, from what I understand, I've, I, I've come to understand of it, it's like go, you suddenly are naked because like if I'm writing at home, I'm just writing, you know, and I can pitch to you and whatever. I'm just pitching. But now if you're in a room with other people, um, you can either accept the fact that you're naked and they'll just be like, okay, I'm naked. Everybody can see everything. Somebody's going to say my eyes bent. Somebody's going to say my fingers, one finger shorter than the other. Somebody's going to say you have beautiful toes. Someone's going to say your knees are pretty, you know. And then somebody's going to say, maybe you need plastic surgery, you know, for whatever. <laughs> um, yes, because that's what happens. Or you can say, you can refuse to accept that you are naked and say, I'm clothed. In that sense, then you start to argue with everyone, even if you don't verbalize, articulate that you're arguing. But what you're doing is you're basically decapitating yourself. That's what I feel anyway. Like it's like you're decapitating yourself. You could just be like, okay, I'm naked. Let's hear. So for me, I've learned not to just say, um, Julia's going to tell me about my project. I don't need to argue. I just need to hear what she thinks. And Julia will say, and then I'll say, if there's things that already strike a chord with me as she's talking, I will say, yes, Julia, I've been thinking about that so that Julia knows that I am listening to her. But if there's things I don't understand, I can say, Julia, actually, I don't know. I'm going to go sleep on it. You know, maybe I'll meet you in, 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 in Kazakhstan in 2020, in 2025 at a festival and say, Julia, the thing that you said, actually, you're correct. But right now, it's a lot. And it will be a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to think through. I'm just gonna go home and I'm gonna think through. And, and I, I'd rather do that than argue with everybody because I don't know. Uh, because five months later, the thing you argued about could be the very thing you do. Um, and the thing that you might think is wrong could turn out to be later on, you meet a bunch of other people that will hop on that, you know? And then you feel, it's like stupid. So it's just better to just say, um, I, I always say to myself, I have to be vulnerable. I, I have to be prepared to be, naked, I have to be prepared that some things have not come across well. And a lot of times now, especially like, I was actually laughing at myself yesterday because I was, I have been writing on the project I went with in 2020. And I looked at my old treatment that I sent to produce it and I was like, oh my gosh, you know? <laughs> like, um, I was like, oh my gosh. And I could see like the, with the feedback I'd gotten, it tied in. I was like, oh my gosh, how did I write? You know, it's like, I was asking myself, not in a negative way, but I was just like, I wrote this. Oh my gosh. You know, like, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. I need to change. I need to, you know. So I think if you're, if you go into, especially something like produced with like that, you'll be okay. You will grow, you will develop, you will evolve. But if you go like with your guns and you want to defend your project, because I don't think their intention is to be at war with you and at odds with you. Their intention is to, to, to help you to go forward. That's, it's, it's really nice and heartening for me to hear you. Um, I think to end, um, we, there are, I've asked each person that I've interviewed to come up with one, two or three words that will describe Chodur au Sud. Now, it, what's really lovely is that um, people have done this creatively. They haven't necessarily said a workshop that da 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 da, but really a word that um, that you, particularly you, nobody else might associate with it. That's so hard. Um, the immediate words, and they are not in what you're asking. I, as you were speaking, it was like empowering enlightening, uplifting. Those are the words that came to me. And if I were to think of, um, uh, it's, that, it's hard <laughs> because I have so many um, things that I could, I think of a rose. Uh, I don't even know how to describe this analogy, but it's like, how, uh, you know, or a flower, you know, like, uh, you know, like, but I thought of a rose, I guess, because I like roses, um, how it starts off as a bud and the image of how it, it goes. And that's sort of what I 
I, I feel like Pajo Osu does. It's like you are a bud and they help you to find a way to open and to shine. Is it shine? I don't know, but you know, whatever Rose does, like at your best. So if you were supposed to be blue, you will bloom blue, you know, like you will, if you, I mean, obviously if you, for if you are prepared, you know, but they are part of that process of helping you to eventually bloom into whatever you're supposed to bloom. And for me, the flower that I just thought of that was instinctively in my head was a rose. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, yeah. I have roses around my garden and it's true that they, they're even beautiful when they're buds, aren't they? Yes, like, yeah. But um, yes, watching them open, like once you see yeah. that they're about to open. Yeah. So it's like, so that's what it sort of encapsulated for me, like that process of like, you, they take you and you're a bud and their hope is to help you, to give you, you know, tools to take you to the next steps where eventually you open. And hopefully you have a nice fragrance and you look good. <laughs>